My name is Caleb Nikomanish. I am a senior level artist at Ascendant. My job as a, as a level artist is to work with level design in all the different departments to take a level design block out and take it all the way to the shipping quality. My focus is purely on the environment side of things, working different departments to ensure that any level design requirements are fulfilled. I work with combat design, puzzle design, just to make sure that all of the gameplay needs are fulfilled. I've always loved art, but I assumed I wasn't very good at it because I thought um, if you need to be an artist, you need to know how to draw and then uh, you need to know how to model and texture and you need to do everything involved with uh, creating an artistic piece. And that isn't it at all, um, especially in terms of level art. You're essentially building worlds using pieces that other people create. So I actually started in video production and graphic design. And then when I knew that I wanted them to go into games, I started with quality assurance. I, I kind of built myself up there. And then I kind of jumped from a lot of different places. I experimented with visual effects. I tried narrative and UX and UI design. I didn't really know where I fit. So I just tried a bunch of things in my free time while I was a QA tester uh, until I found level design. And I was like, oh, level design, this is great. I love design and I experimented with it. I ended up getting a job at Halo Infinite doing campaign world design, which a majority of that was level design. I didn't understand level art was a thing uh, until I went to uh, work at 343 Industries and I worked with several uh, amazing and talented level artists and I knew that was what I wanted to get into. On a day-to-day -day basis, we solve problems that are, are, are raised from an artistic side. Um, we work with design that ensures that the game is playable and fun uh, from a player experience side. And it's my job to make sure that it looks good. So just solving problems, making sure that, you know, the level designers get what they need, uh, animators and lighting artists to make sure that they get everything they need. Basically, it's just ensuring that we are on track to finish the level that we need to uh, accomplish by the end date. What that means on, on a day-to-day -day basis sometimes um, in, in terms of the actual art itself, you know, we're sculpting terrain, we're kit bashing structures together, we're building a natural environments, supporting new design requests and blockouts to ensure we hit that quality bar that we, we need to see. If, if we're talking about getting into the industry, my belief that you do not need to know Maya, knowing any 3D software that behaves like Maya means that you are able to show that those sk skills can transfer over to whatever software that that studio uses. And there's always a little bit of, of ramp up time when you start a job uh, where you have to use their own specific tool. For instance, I learned in Unity and Unreal, um, but I haven't worked in a lot of jobs that use Unity or Unreal. Using um, Unreal, for instance, um, I'm able to navigate around a 3D environment and navigate an editor, as an editor in an effective way. So when I use the, the proprietary software at these studios, I'm, I, I sort of have an understanding of how it works, you know, if they work somewhat similar. What's worked for me in the past, and I don't know if this works for everybody, is um, I usually start by like researching the role that I want and at the company that I want and figuring out, you know, what games do they make, what software do they use if it's publicly available. And then just trying to figure out, you know, how much time that you have in order to basically build something in that style. Because I think it's important to have a little bit of variation in your portfolio, but also being able to show that you can build a a scene or in, in my instance, you can build a scene that is in the in the style that they build their scenes in and also showing that you have a little bit of diversity in your portfolio, I think is uh, can do a lot of great wonders. And for me, it's always good to apply even if I feel that I'm unqualified based off the position. If, if they think that I'm good, uh, they will they will work with me to, to basically overcome these qualifications or they'll create a new position for me, um, which is very common and I've seen that. I think I spent six months of just building Halo levels and building Halo images and basically applying it every chance I could. Because I did the same thing for other jobs that I wanted. I, I tried to make content that fits in those parameters so that I could apply to those jobs. Um, because I, I think it's really strong to be able to build content that is not yours and make it feel like it's um, part of this bigger product. I would say, you know, experiment, you know, try new things. Um, and don't be afraid to try and inevitably fail, you know, the first few times. As I was saying before, you know, I jumped from job to job, uh, not job to job, uh, from, from position to position. I didn't have actual positions, you know, in visual effects or UX or UI design or narrative, but I wanted to do those things and I tried them and I knew that I wasn't good at them. <laughs> I, I tried and I realized this isn't for me, even though I like it, I am not good at it.
Um, so be, be okay with failing and be okay with failing very often.